بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد إخوة الإسلام يا عباد الله we're continuing with the explanation. Well, first and foremost, uh, this is the 13th class to the book, The Six Fundamentals. And uh, we started the fifth fundamental last week, Wallah Alhamd. And inshallah, this week, will continue as it relates to uh, where we left off at as it relates to this particular fundamental. Now, Okay. Give me one second, uh, Ikhwa. Now, as usual, I don't think I'm going to start. Well, we, we're continuing with the fifth uh, fundamental. And I'll just read directly from how uh, it was translated to save time uh, and then go in directly into the uh, explanation of the Shaykh. Um, but as Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab at Tamimi and Najdi, he said uh, what is meant or rendered into English the following the clarification of Allah, the glorified concerning his awliya along with differentiation between them and those who resemble them from Allah's enemies, the hypocrites and the immoral. Sufficient with, the, with regards to illustration of this is a verse in Ali Imran, uh, and this is verse 31, and it is a statement, say, if you love Allah, then follow me. Consequently, Allah will love you to the end of the verse. Moreover, the verse in Al-Ma'idah, which is verse 54, all you who believe, whoever among you that turns away from his religion will result in Allah coming with the people that he will love and they will love him to the end of the verse. Likewise, the verse in Yunus, verses 62 and 63, undoubtedly the awliya of Allah shall not be overcome with grief, nor shall they, uh, will not be overcome with fear, nor shall they grieve those that believe and exemplify at taqwa. Thereafter, this affair, within an abundance of those that feign knowledge among the guiders and or mentors of the creation and the preservers of the Islamic legislation, started to be uh, started to be perce perceived as relates to the awli awliya, that it was necessary for them to abandon conformity to the messengers 
Therefore, whoever followed the messengers was not among the awliya. Furthermore, they perceived that it was necessary, yani, for the awliya to abandon jihad. Hence, whoever participated therein was not among them, yani, not amongst the awliya. Lastly, they, they perceived it to be necessary to abandon al-iman and at taqwa so whoever committed himself to al-iman and at taqwa was not among them yani not among the awliya and then the shaykh at the end he makes dua for the reader or oh, oh our lord we ask you for pardon and protection indeed you are you indeed you are the all hearing of invocations indeed you are the all hearing of invocations so This is what we took a look at last week, or we started to take a look at last week, and we're continuing as it relates to this particular fundamental. So, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al Uthaymin, he, he states, وَقَدْ أَشَارَ الشَّيْخُ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى إِلَى عَلَامَةُ مُحَبَّةُ وَإِلَى عَلَامَةِ مُحَبَّةِ اللَّهِ he states that the Sheikh, meaning the author of the book, yani he points towards the signs of love with what with that which was quoted from the varying ayat, from the varying verses within the, within the Quran. And then he states the first verse is his is the exalted statement in Surah Ali Imran Kul in Kuntum to Hibun Allah Fetabiruni Yuhbibukum Allah to the end of the verse. He states, Say, if you love Allah, if you really love Allah, then follow me. As a result, Allah will love you. Wahadihil ayah to summa aya al mihna a al imtihan. حيث ادعى قوم محبة الله تعالى فأنزل الله هذه الآية فمن ادعى محبة الله تعالى نظرنا في عمله فإن كان متبعا لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فهو صادق وإلا فهو كاذب فهو كاذب and this is really quite simple uh, the sheikh meaning al Uthaymin or Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayh, he says, this verse has been dubbed the verse of Mihna, yani, and then he states, the intent, al Imtihan, yani, a verse in which is used to test those that claim, is used to test the people that claim that they love Allah. This verse is used to test anyone that claims that they love Allah, that they have within their hearts a heart filled of love for Allah. So Allah to wa ta'ala revealed or sent down this particular verse for whoever made this claim, whoever alleged having love of Allah. So we as Muslims, we look towards and or analyze or scrutinize the one who makes this claim, his actions, we scrutinize him. And if he is one that is in conformity to Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then he is deemed to be or considered to be truthful in his claim of holding and or, and or harboring within his heart love for Allah. And if that is not the case, meaning if his actions are looked into and is seen that his actions are not in accordance with, with, uh, with Allah's Messenger, وسلم, meaning in the, the Sunnah of the Messenger, وسلم, they're not in accordance with that. They, he's not in conformity to that. Then, in this case, regardless if this person says, I love Allah, I love Allah, I love Allah, He's considered to be a liar as it relates to his claim of loving Allah, as it relates to that uh, particular claim. 
Now, when looking at this verse, uh, then it's this verse is understood how it can be seen in this manner. Even when we translate it to English, uh, the meaning uh, is explicitly clear. Kul in kuntum Allah and this portion of the verse is, is a, there, therein is a conditional clause. And it has, the, uh, this portion of the verse has the components in the Arabic language of a conditional clause. First, in. In being, is from what they call adawatu short, which would be, you know, the main component of, of, of a short, of a condition. Uh, then you have kuntum, uh, which is really, I mean, from kana, what akhawatu ha is kana. We, we know that any, uh, as it relates to kana, what akhawatu ha, uh, I lost my train of thought for one second. Kul in kuntum tuhibun Allah. In this particular verse, kana, that this kana, which is kun, kun tum, which uh, yani it would be in a in the place of the fi'lu shart. Yani, this is one of the key components as it relates to a conditional clause in the Arabic language. And that's what I was about to say. When we're dealing with kana, we know that kana and its akhawat, its sisters, for lack of better translation, they, when they appear in a sentence, you have what you call ismu kana, then you have khabaru kana. And so in this particular verse, kul in kuntum tuhibun Allah, tuhibun, yani this would be considered khabaru kan, right? This would be considered khabaru kana. Now, this may be a little bit over people's heads who are not studying the Arabic language, but for those who are, then the, what I'm saying is understood. But then, if this is a conditional clause, then where is the jawab shart? Where is this portion of it? That would be the, that which is coming as the jawab shart. Meaning, in other words, if your heart is truly filled with love of Allah, then do this, then this. All right. If you are, if you have this with you, it's conditional. If you have that truly with you, then move on to this. It's similar, like when we have the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu when he was given uh, Mu'adh ibn Jabal advice when he sent him to, to Yemen, he stated, فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلْ مَا يَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ أَشْشَحَادَةِ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَإِنَّ مُحَمِّدْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ That the very first thing you call them to be the testimony that there is no deity worthy of worship and truth, and truth except Allah, and that I am the messenger of Allah. Then the Prophet ﷺ, he states, فَإِنْهُمْ عَطَارُوا لِذَلِكِ And if they obey you in that, here it is. This is a conditional clause. Clause. There's the other way to short, and there's the fi'lu short. If they obey you in that, meaning that has to be there, then before you can move on to what was about to be said, it's a condition that this must be in place. If they obey you in that, فَعَلَمْهُمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ اِحْتَرَضَ عَلَيْهِمْ خَمْسَ صَلَوَاتٍ فِي كُلِّ يَوْمٍ وَلَيْلَةٍ. If they obey you in that, then inform them, informing that Allah has made binding upon them five, uh, five daily prayers. So this is similar within this verse. Kul in kuntum tuhibun Allah. If you love Allah, meaning the love of Allah is, is the condition, this must be in place, then what? Then follow me. Then follow me. So assuring that that love is conditional, that love of the heart is conditional, it has to be there. Then follow me. And then what is stated after, after that, يُحْبِبُكُمُ Allah. This is what the, what the scholars call a response, جواب الْأَمْرِ 
It's a response to the command or joab al-talab. It's a response to the command of what's being requested of the person. What is being requested from the person is that it be ni, follow me. That's what's being commanded in this verse for the person. But it's being commanded after with the condition that you have that love in your heart for Allah. Follow me. So if a person does that, then the response to that, to that following, to that command or to that request is that Allah will love you. Is that Allah will love you. And so this is why it's understood to be as Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al uthaymin stated, that it is a verse, this verse was dubbed yani, uh, the verse of yani, like testing or trying someone. If, if you're sedating, if you're, uh, if you're claiming, if you're feigning, that you have love in your heart, that your heart is filled of, for love of Allah, then you would be doing this. Why? Because by answering that command, in turn, you will get this. I need the love of Allah. And there's no other way, uh, part of the ayah, that that love of Allah can be obtained. Can be obtained. And so, when we look into the uh, the life of the companions of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then we see examples of those who truly understood what love for Allah or love of Allah is and how to go about obtaining Allah's love. And there are some illustrations of this or there are many illustrations of this found within the annals of history that have been recorded in the books of Hadith. We have an authentic narration that is upon the authority of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, or Ridwan Allah Ta'ala Alayhi, and it's Mu'tafiqun Alayhi, meaning Kalaki Babu Fad al Imam al Bukhari and Imam Muslim. With the Prophet, وسلم, he stated, La'an Allah, oh, excuse me, the narrator stated, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, La'an Allah al Washimat, wal Mutashimat, wal Mutanamisat, wal Mutafalijat, lil Husn, al Mughayyarat, Khalq Allah. He stated that Allah curses the female that does tattoos and the one that requests a, ta a tattoo. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala curses the woman that removes facial hairs and what is intended specifically are the, yani, the eyebrows, plucking and or removing yani, the eyebrows and thus forth and so on. And the women that make gaps in their teeth for the purpose of beauty, women that are changing the creation of Allah. Women that are changing the creation of Allah. So the narrator, the Sahabi says, فَبَلْغَ ذَلِكَ إِمْرَأَةً إِمْرَأَةً مِنْ بَنِي أَسَدْ يُقَالُوا لَهَا أُمْ يَعْقُوبُ So this statement reached a woman from the tribe of Asad, from the tribe of Bani Asad. And she was known or called or named or, or known as أُمْ يَعْقُوبُ فَجَاءَتْ so she came and she said, uh, She said that it reached me that you curse so and so or such and such a person. So Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he responded, What ma'ali? La ala'anu ma'ala'ana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Woman, uh, woman who of kitab billah, what, 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 what would be with me, what would be wrong with me, in other words, 
if I did not curse whom that that whom the messenger sallallahu alaihi cursed and he who was in the in the book of Allah he who was mentioned in the book of Allah she responded laqad qara'tu ma bayna al-lawhain wa ma wajadtu fihi ma taqul she said i have read what is from cover to cover between the covers of the uh, of the quran and i have not found in it what you are saying what you are saying so abdullah ibn mas'ud he responded if you truly have found uh, if you if you had truly read it then you would have found it have you not read the statement of, uh, of Allah when he says, whatever the messenger gives you, take it. Whatever he forbids you from, abstain from it. The woman, Um Yaqub, she, ref she responded in the affirmative. Yes, Bella. Yes, I've read this. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud then stated, Qad naha anhu. Indeed, he has prohibited it. I need these things that he mentioned that were cursed. Now, look at the understanding of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. He clearly understood that what the Prophet وسلم, said, that it was in the book of Allah. Whatever he commanded, whatever he forbade, it was in the book of Allah. Because it was included within the ayah that he quoted. And he understood that, that he, would, he would have full conformity and full submission to the commands and the prohibitions of the Prophet ﷺ. In contradiction to Muslims today, that guesswork, they play guessing games. Limada, kaf, limada. How? Why? Why? I don't understand. And that's what for so on. The command could be made clear. The prohibition could be made clear. You even have some people saying, "Oh no, I'm not going to accept that. It's not in the book of Allah. The Quran, the Quran, the Quran. That's it." Yet they contradict the Quran as it relates to this statement and how it was understood by the best of the Muslims ever. I need that first generation. Likewise, we have another illustration of true love for Allah and conformity to the Sunnah, the Hadith of Jabir ibn Sulaim, which is collected by Imam, or was collected by Abu Dawood in his Sunan. Where he stated, رأيت رجلاً يصدر الناس عن رأيه لا يقول شيء إلا يصدر عنه فقلت من هذا؟ فقالوا هذا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. To the end of the narration, he said that I saw a man that. I saw a man in which the people, all of his opinions, they accepted. They accepted. Whatsoever he said as it relates to a thing, they accepted it. They implemented it. And thus forth and so on. So the narrator says, so I asked, who is this man? Who is he? Because he was amazed at how the people when they heard the Prophet Sallallahu say something, the uh, compliance was immediate. There was no second guessing. And thus forth, there was no hesitation. So he was amazed, he was astounded. Man, who is this man? Who is that? They responded to him, this is Allah's messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They responded that this is Allah's messenger this is how that verse should be enacted the way that the companions enacted it 
as we know by the shahada of Allah, that they were sincere. And they were giving glad tidings of paradise while the verses of the Quran were being revealed. So they are a yardstick as it relates to, to, to the exemplification of a believer in, in his love of Allah and conformity to the Messenger وسلم, in his love of Allah and in attempting to acquire Allah's love of them. They are without a doubt yani, an example in that regard. And so when looking at and understanding this and contemplating on what we just said, then we understand that whoever, uh, whoever makes the claim to have a heart that is filled with love for Allah, as many do, yet he doesn't follow the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then this is what is intended when the scholars say either he's going to be, he's, he's truthful or he's a liar meaning he's truthful if he is actually doing what Allah says, responding to the command of Allah, and following the Messenger وسلم, due to that love in his heart for Allah, or he's not doing that, and the only person that would slack and lack and, and be stubborn as it relates to conformity to the, to the Messenger, and like this, is the person who is just feigning love, but in reality he has no real love in his heart for the, for Allah. Because who would have or claim to have love in their heart for Allah, but would not do that which would necessitate or that which would be the means for Allah to, in turn to love him. Anybody that, that loves someone even in this creation, if you love someone, you yearn for them to reciprocate that love, to all likewise have some type of love for you. And so if that's the case with, with aspects of the creation, then without a doubt, he who is greater than and more magnificent than anything within this creation if a person truly loves the Creator, Yani, who is who is the Most High and the Exalted and the All Powerful, and thus forth and so on, anybody that truly has that love would be ardently craving that Creator in turn loving Him, and so He's going to take whatever means that He needs in order to achieve that love. That's a person that's being truthful with his uh, statement of having a heart filled with love of Allah. So, and before I continue, now keep, keep what I, I said in mind. Now we have, how is it possible that a person can feign to love Allah and not be, not follow that which Allah it has commanded him to follow as it relates to conformity to the Messenger and thus forth and so on. Yet he claims he has love for Allah. But he is incapable of doing that which munafiqun have done by outwardly displaying conformity to the messenger. You have love of Allah and this person over here is just faking it, but yet you claim you have real love of Allah, but they're more in accordance with on a law here with obedience to Allah, to, to Allah than you are and you the one that loves Allah. You see how this claim, uh, this claim to love Allah without backing it with that which Allah is calling to, 
exposes a person's uh, yani fraudulent claim. Because you see, when looking at this comparison, you see how it exposes their fraudulent claim. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala knows best. Now, I want to go back, when, when looking at that point that I just mentioned, I want to go back to right before the verse is quoted, where the Shaykh states, وَتَفْرِيقُهُ بَيْنَهُمْ وَبَيْنَ الْمُتَشَبِّهِينَ بِهِمْ مِنَ عَدَاءِ اللَّهِ الْمُنَافِقِينَ وَالْفُجَّارِ he says, and the differentiation between them, meaning the awliya, and those that resemble them from amongst the enemies of Allah, yani the munafiqun and the fujjar. The fujjar, I'm going to just translate as the sinful people, or sinful, sinful or corrupt individuals for, for now. But these are people that Allah Tabaraka, or that the, the Shaykh Akwan is saying may resemble those who are awliya of Allah, but are not really from the awliya of Allah. So first, let's take a look at these two groups of people that are being mentioned. Al-Munafiqun, we know that they are those that have with them an nifaq which is normally translated as hypocrisy. But what is intended by nifaq in Al-Islam? The intent of it is an yudhira al insan ma yuwafiqu al haq wa yubtinu ma yukhalifuhu. It is that an individual outwardly displays that which is in accordance with the truth, but inwardly harbors that which is that which clashes with it. And that is regardless if it is as it relates to one's belief or actions. Then that ta'arif or that definition is very important for those that are taking notes. That's definitely something, a, a, a note that you wanted to take. Now, when looking at this definition of an nifaq, then we understand one that an nifaq first and foremost has two categories. And this definition is encompassing of both these categories. But when we look at each category, then the definition becomes a bit more sharpened. I know I'm, for lack of better expression, it becomes a lot more defined, a lot more, uh, a lot more clear, for lack of better expressions. So when looking at a nifaq, we, we know that it's categorized into two categories. One, al-akbar. Two, al-asghar. One is major nifaq. The second is minor nifaq. Minor nifaq. Now, when looking at major nifaq, then the definition for it is idhahar al-islam wa ibutan al-kufr. Outwardly displaying al-islam and inwardly harboring disbelief. Disbelief. So the corruption is within it's an affair of the heart one is outwardly displaying in front of the people one thing but what is inside of him conflicts with and contradicts what is being what is what appears on the outer and for this reason this category is called nifaq al-akbar but it's also called nifaq al-i'tiqadi the creed-related hypocrisy the creed-related hypocrisy and without a doubt 
It is deception, lying, and thus forth and so on. For this reason, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, he states uh, in his noble book, إِذَا جَاءَكَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ قَالُوا نَشَّدُوا or نَشَّدُوا إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ لَرَسُولُهُ وَاللَّهُ يَشَّدُوا إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ Allah says, and when the hypocrites come to you, they say, we bear witness that indeed, we bear witness that undoubtedly, you are verily the messenger of Allah. And I'm translating like translating it in this manner because in the Arabic language, the statement of the munafiqun, they use tawqeed, fawqad tawqeed. They use emphasis on top of emphasis in the language in an attempt to say, we know you're the messenger of Allah. It was like they were saying, undoubtedly, we know with surety that you are certainly the messenger of Allah. They use a bunch of emphasis when making this statement to the statement to the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Allah continues, and Allah knows you are his messenger. And Allah bears witness that the munafiqun are liars. So even though they use emphasis on top of emphasis with their tongue, trying to convince the Prophet وسلم, that, they were be, that they were being truthful, Allah disproves their claim. And said, no, these individuals are liars despite the emphasis that they were using in their claim. So they were outwardly displaying al-Islam and al-Iman, but inwardly they had none of that. They had none of that. For this reason, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, he states in Surah Al-Baqarah, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ And from the people, there are those that say, we believe, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخَرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ There are those that say we believe in Allah and the last day, but they are not believers. يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ And they are striving to deceive Allah and those that believe. However, they don't deceive anyone except their selves while they do not perceive it. In their hearts is a disease and Allah will cause it, that disease to increase. And for them is a, is a severe punishment on account of that on account of the fact that they used to lie, that they lied. They were being deceitful as it relates to their claim of having al-Iman. They displayed it outwardly, but they had something else with them inwardly. Yani al-Kufr, al-Kufr. And this major nifaq, It, it has its types. This type of nifaq, this major nifaq, or the, uh, uh, this nifaq, as, uh, this creed-related nifaq, it has its varying types, six to be exact. Six to be exact. The first being takdibu rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, denying the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, denying him. In the absolute sense, having denial as it relates to Muhammad being a messenger, one denies that, one rejects it. Denying that Islam is a religion from Allah, revealed from above the seven heavens, and thus forth and so on. The second, takdi ba'di ma jaa bihi al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Denial of something that the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with so this isn't this second one differs from the first and that denial is there but the first one is in the absolute sense everything of al islam is denied al islam is denied period 
in an absolute sense. This type, Islam is accepted. But there are aspects of Islam that are being denied. That are being denied. Now, I want to read from the statement of Sheikh Ibrahim ibn Sheikh Saleh al Khuraisi in his book At Tanbihat al Muhtasira Shah al Wajibat al Mutahatimat al Ma'rifa al Kulli Muslim wa Muslima. As it relates to this type of Nifak al al Atiqadi, he states, Wahad al Nau, or this type from the types of nifaq as it relates to one's creed makes obligatory the remaining the remaining in within the fire when we say remaining within the fire yani in an absolute sense yani eternal remaining within the fire or within the fire and it is the least of that which was mentioned before it meaning it's lesser than having total denial of al-Islam in a general sense or in an unrestricted sense. But he, can say, but, but he continues, وَلَكِنَّهُ أَشَدُّ خَطَرًا مِنْهُ However, it is more severe and it's danger than the first one. It's more dangerous than the first type. And that is because a Muslim could fall into it while he doesn't even perceive that he's fallen into it. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala's refuge is sought from that. For indeed a man, he could reject and or deny something from what the Messenger Sallallahu came with. And he doesn't affirm it. While he knows that it is a type, that, that to do that is a type from the types of major nifaq that exits one from the religion. And so as a result of him denying this one thing of the religion, then he is a munafiq from amongst the munafiqs that will be abiding in the fire there, there forever. That will be abiding in the, fire, in the fire forever. So this is very important what, what the Sheikh is stating, that we as Muslims, we have to be very careful of denying any aspect of the religion. Denying any aspect can have dire consequences. And so for the one, uh, the, the, like the Sheikh states, this particular type is more dangerous than total denial because a person could slip into it and not perceive it. There could be an aspect of the religion that he hears and he says, no, I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't agree with that. I don't think a lot would, you know, whatever logic he uses to justify why he doesn't agree with it. I, he rege I reject that. I reject that. Just that one aspect. This is why this is more dangerous than the first type, as the Sheikh was pointing out. The third, Bukhdur Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hatred for the messenger. Outright hating the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The fourth, Bugh Ba'di Ma Ja'a Bihi or Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hating something in which the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with. So this is different from what was mentioned before it. Again, well, what was mentioned before it is in the absolute sense. All of Islam is hated. This type is something from amongst Al-Islam is hated and not is Al-Islam in the absolute sense. And so the Sheikh, the same Sheikh, he states, This type is more specific, more particular than that which was mentioned before it. And this, indeed, it emanates from a Muslim that loves the messenger. Now keep this in mind. What the Sheikh is saying, this type of, of hatred emanates, it could emanate from someone that actually loves the messenger or loves what the messenger came or, and or was sent with. However, due to his ignorance, his unhappiness, and the 
uh, and the shaitan inciting him and deceiving him, he, as a result of that, hates something that the Messenger وسلم, came with. And on account of that, he falls into Nifak al Akbar, where he doesn't even know it. Or he doesn't even know it. And I'm going to be honest with you uh, when looking at certain topics and certain subjects with, within Al Islam. And, I, and the reactions of Muslims as it pertains to certain subjects, I really fear that, that some could be falling into this. When you go on, on social media forums and for instance, polygyny is brought up and some of these Facebook groups that are specific to marriage, polygyny unwrapped and uh, uh, what was the other one? Uh, polygyny, uh, I don't recall the other, the other one's name. But at any rate, certain posts are made. A brother may make a post, and you find a lot of sisters chiming in. And Arudu Billah, you see statements as if sisters hate this aspect of Al Islam. We're not talking about statements that indicate. A woman would prefer to be by herself with her husband. No. Statements that either indicate denial of it or indicate hatred of it. And then, so we have to be real careful. And there are other subject matters that we find on social media. If they're bought up, we find Muslims making statements as if they either hate it or they deny it. We have to be very careful. Every Muslim, no matter how righteous you think you may be, we have to be very careful from falling into denial of something from amongst that which uh, the, the Messenger وسلم, was sent with or hatred for something in which the Messenger وسلم, was sent with. And if we have that, we harbor that, there's no way we can be from amongst the awliya of Allah. There's no way that a person like this could ever be a wali of Allah. Because we're commanded to not only love Allah, but love whomever Allah loves, and love whatsoever Allah loves. Our love is supposed to be for Allah's sake. Continuing, the fifth, as it relates to the types of nifaq al atiqadi the fifth is being pleased bin khifad din rasul sallallahu alaihi being pleased and happy and rejoicing at the lowering of the deen of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam being pleased with that that was the fifth excuse me i think i may have said fourth if i if i say fourth and that's the fifth excuse me and the sixth type is Al-Kirahiyya to Al-Kirahiyya bin Tisar Deen Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Hating to see the Deen of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uplifted Hating to see it in a triumphant state One hates to see that These six things if one are just, is just gathered in the individual, then this individual is a clear munafiq. It's a clear munafiq, the munafiq or the nifaq uh, that is creed related. That is creed related. And these types, they all have their evidences within the book and the sunnah, but my time is almost running out, so we don't have uh, time to get to quote textual evidence. As for nifaq al-asghar, or the minor nifaq, it is that a man outwardly displays ala niyyatan saliha wa yubtinu ma yukhalifu dhalika He states, uh, or, or it is to out, a man, it is a man outwardly displaying uh, righteousness. Righteousness, 
but inwardly he harbors what contradicts and or contrasts with that righteousness that he uh, that he displays to the people. So this particular aspect of nifaq is not an aspect that takes one out of Islam. The first type, without a doubt, takes one out of Islam because it's uh, displaying outwardly al-Islam but inwardly harboring disbelief. So without a doubt, that type of person is a disbeliever. This is, that is a, heart, a matter of the heart. But this is a person outwardly displaying righteousness. So this is as it pertains to the person's actions, not his heart. And so for this reason, Nifaq al asghar is also classified as Nifaq al-Amali, the action-related hypocrisy. The action-related hypocrisy. And this hip hypocrisy has its types and or indications as well. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Haditha Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he said ayatu munafik thalatha. The signs of the hypocrite are three. Whenever he speaks, he lies. Whenever he makes a promise, he doesn't fulfill his promise. And whenever he's entrusted, he betrays the trust. In another narration of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, there are two other things mentioned. Either ahada ghadara, wa either khasama fajara. Whenever he makes a covenant, a contract, he ghadara, uh, he breaks it, he breaks the contract. And whenever he uh, quarrels, for lack of better expressions, or whenever he disputes, He's immoral with his disputation. He is immoral with his disputation. What is intended here, as Imam Noah, we stated, because a lot of uh, brothers and sisters uh, misunderstand what's intended by the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu here. Many of us think that they use total, yeah, straight up rude behavior and uh, uh, the most blameworthy of behavior when they're in, when they have a dispute with someone, you know, may use profanity, you know, that's what for someone. A lot of people assume that that's what's intended. That's not what's intended. Imam Manoawi, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi, when he was explaining the intent of this aspect of nifaq uh, al-amali, he stated that it is a disputation wherein a person makes the truth look false and makes falsehood look like the truth. And he stated that it is a form, a specific form of lying. It's a specific form of lying. So this is what is intended uh, by that. And so again, for the person that is suffering from an nifaq, regardless of his i'tiqadi or amali, and this person would not be considered a wali of Allah. He would not be considered a wali of Allah because he's not in a conformity to, uh, to, 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 the, to that, yeah, and to that which would necessitate uh, being a wali of Allah. Yeah, and he, for one to harbor clear disbelief, then this person has absolutely no love in his heart for Allah whatsoever. And then the second type, is that uh, this nifaq brings about a reduction yani, in the person's faith. <clears throat> and I have more prepared, but the reality is, as it relates to what was intended by Fujar, uh, well, my time is just about up, but I'll just say this. Fujar in the Arabic language is the plural to Fajir. And fajir could sometimes take the, the meaning of fasik, or sometimes it could take the meaning of kafir, depending on how far one the, the person 
the the person is as it relates to that as it relates to fujur as it relates to uh, sinfulness uh, Ibn Qutayba in his book Ghurib al-Hadith he gave a definition for the fajr he states al-ma'il an al haq he is the one that strays away from the truth and so this is why the person could be considered a kafir or could be considered a fasik it could be synonymous with these based on how far a person strays from the truth. If a person strays so far that he hits the boundaries of disbelief, then in this case, the, this fajr would be a kafir, would be synonymous with that. But if he strays, but doesn't reach those boundaries and still remains in, within the fold of al-Islam, then this person may be a fasik. And it is, uh, not compatible with being someone that's considered righteous. Not consider, uh, yani, uh, someone who has within him al-bir, or righteousness. Uh, the Prophet وسلم, he stated in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, or the Ta'ala alayhi, inna al-sidq yahdi ila al-bir, wa inna al-bir yahdi ila al-jannah. He states that Truthfulness, it leads to al-bir, or righteousness. And righteousness will lead, leads to paradise. And an individual will not cease being truthful hatta yakuna, or hatta yakuna siddiqan. He will not cease being truthful, excuse me, being truthful until he is and or becomes and or is dubbed or considered to be someone that is uh, a Siddiq, one that is truthful in speech. Then the Prophet وسلم, he stated, وَإِنَ الْكَذِبِ يَحْدِي إِلَى الْفُجُورِ وَإِنَ الْفُجُورِ يَحْدِي إِلَى النَّارِ And indeed, lying leads to fujur, sinfulness. And this sinfulness, it leads to the fire. It leads to the fire. And a man will not cease lying hatta yuktaba in the law kathaban until he is written with the law to be a liar. To be a liar. So again, the fajr is one who strays away from the truth. And the one who strays away from the truth, this would include to the point of kufr or that which is less than al kufr. And Allah to Baraka wa Ta'ala knows best, but these two groups of people, you may find them resembling the awliya in the eyes of the ignorant. They may resemble the awliya, but in reality, they are not from them. They are not from them. With that, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk, the brothers and sisters have to, have to excuse me, uh, but I, I am tired, <clears throat> I'm a little tired, but that, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.